your teenager isn't lazy or rebellious. It's possible that your teenager is going through a season in his or her life and just needs your attention. And today, mothers, guardians, I'm going to be sharing four things um, that could be going on with your teenager and how you can actually help them. Hi, ladies. How are you all doing? My name is Remy. And I am an unburdening and identity restoration specialist based in Bolton, United Kingdom. So like I said, I'm going to be sharing tips with you today to help you handle your teenager better. Now, what I find is teenagers are an interesting bunch of human beings. And a lot of parents oftentimes struggle because they are wondering, why is my teenager acting out of character? I'm doing everything right, but this child just seems to be going in the wrong direction. I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm burnt out. What do I do? And oftentimes the first thing we're thinking is this child is just being lazy and rebellious. But it's not always that. I need us to not just generalize and believe that because teenagers tend um, to go out of character, that that is exactly what is wrong with your child. Before you get to that point, why not look at the other options and be sure that you're taking the right decision? So let's go right into it. Number one, I need you to understand that pressure is a thing. Give that child some space and some grace. I need you to start that learning as a parent, as a guardian, to validate your child's emotions. Remind that child that her worth, his worth, isn't attached to their grades because oftentimes we make it look like if you don't get an A, you're a waste of space. If you don't get an A, because you can't get into this school, you're stupid. If you don't get an A, all your mates, you know, we make it look like without getting an A, there is no use or no good that can come out of them. And this is pressure. And sometimes this pressure just makes that child lose the ability or zeal to want to do anything. Let me, let, let me put it this way. Imagine yourself as a mother, as a father, as a guardian at work. And you're trying everything, but your boss always makes it look like because let's say you had 10 targets, you didn't meet the 10 targets, you're a waste of space. You'll realize that it will get to a point where when it comes to waking up and going to work, you're just not feeling it anymore. It's the same with your teenager. But instead, this pressure is coming from you. Imagine that they're facing this pressure at school and then coming home where it's meant to be a safe space, you're here comparing them to their mates, to their friends, or even to yourself. Some of you even lie and say, when I was your age, I was scoring an A. Were you really scoring an A? Exactly. Number two, your teenager might be feeling overwhelmed and might just need a break. I need you to take time out with no phones, no work, no expectations, no chores. Um, and this will lead yourself and your teenager to being present. Being present leads to rest. So no phones, no chores, nothing like that, no expectations. Just take time out with your teenager. Go on a holiday. And it's when I say holiday, don't just think, oh, Remy is saying we should spend money. A holiday might just mean leave your house and go to the nearest hotel. It can be, you know, a, a, a low budget hotel. It's just an avenue for you and your teenager to be alone. No distractions of phone, no work expectations, no school expectations. Just sitting down and conversing. Because when you see that there's those distractions are out, you'll find that your teenager will begin to speak to you more because they have nothing else to do than to speak to you. So how you respond will determine how that time away will do. And you'll be so amazed at how being present with your child will do so much. Like you won't even need to spend all the money and shout and do all of those things. You just need to put in the work. And it's baby steps. Do this often to help your child stop being overwhelmed. Number three, it's possible that your teenager is burnt out. 
take your child out i know you like going on dates with your spouses but why not just go out with your child i don't like saying go on a date with your child because dates are associated with love interest so i tend to like to keep that as that and i'll just say take your child out don't talk about school don't talk about chores Talk about things that your child likes. And when you're taking your child out, don't go to a place that you like. Go to a place that your child likes. Does he like to play football? If it's, for example, one of these games, Chelsea. My husband likes Chelsea. Buy a ticket to a Chelsea match. Go with your child and let them just have fun. Because sometimes the reason why your teenager is not doing their chores, why you're saying the same thing over and over again and it looks like they're not listening to you is because they are burnt out and they just need a break. So take them out to a place that they like. This is so important. It shouldn't be a place that you like, a place that your child likes. Because remember, it's all about that teenager and you really want them to begin to behave. The last point I'm going to be giving today is it's possible that your teenager is feeling lonely. Encourage time with friends. I know a lot of times we're like, I don't want you to be free. I have friends. Friends are bad. But uh, uh. <sighs> no man is an island. And can, are you telling me that all human beings are bad? If you're saying that, that means you're saying you're bad. Your child is bad. They are good people. I know that sometimes because of the not so pleasant experiences we've had as parents, we try to now project that onto our children and say there are no good friends out there, they are all bad. That is a um, negative projection and we shouldn't be doing that. Encourage time with friends. Instead, if you're bothered about the kind of friends, why not make your home a place or a space where your children can bring their friends home. So it gives you an opportunity to see the kind of people they're mingling with. And if there are one or two people that you know are not good, you can begin to pray them out and you can look for strategies to ensure that you detach yourself from that person, your child from that person. But if you don't even know your child's friends, how do you begin to help your child? Because a lot of times, you see, these teenagers, they have dual personalities. They come home acting like, oh, I'm a saint. Out there, they are tigers. So it's important that you make your home, your environment, a safe space for your child, your children to bring their friends. Encourage time with friends because sometimes they don't want to talk to you. They don't want to hang out with you. They just want to be with people like them who understand what they're saying. Because sometimes, even as a woman, I'm here and I'm thinking, yeah, I know I've got my husband, but I want to talk to a lady that kind of gets what I'm saying, not my husband. And if you can relate, just think about it, your child as well. And I'm going to add a bonus point, which is number five. Think of it this way. So let's say your child is 18, okay? Think of yourself as an 18 year old. What did you want to be done? What were the things you were complaining about? Are you being a better parent or are you being that parent that you were complaining about? When you were 18, what were the things you were doing? If you begin to put yourself into the shoes of your child or children, you begin to see that they're not really being out of character. Sometimes they're just being teenagers and they're just being human. But at the end of the day, why I'm sharing this video is to help you know that whatever it is that you're going through with your child now, it can be fixed. It's not the end of the road. Do not give up on that child just so quickly. Implement strategies. Create time to be there for your child. And most importantly, pray. Pray for your child and teach them as well to pray. And be patient with the journey. And I know that the good Lord will cause you to smile over your children in the name of Jesus. May we not weep over them. May we not have any cause to cry for help over them. The agenda of the enemy will not come to pass over any one of these children in the name of Jesus. They are a light that has been set upon a hill. And they cannot and will never be hidden. Don't give up on that child. Keep going. Because truly, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you for watching today. And I'll see you at my next video. Bye-bye.